This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is about the definition of geopotential. We have developed the horizontal momentum equation which has the forces of the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force and frictional force and this form also has the curvature terms. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start thinking about the vertical structure of the atmosphere. We're going to think about the strong relationship between pressure and height. And we are going to recast the equations ultimately into the pressure coordinates because there are a number of theoretical and practical advantages to doing that. In order to do that, we're going to use a function, a concept called the geopotential. In the first lectures, we talked about some of the basics of the Earth's atmosphere. One of the things that I mentioned there was whether or not people were familiar with the units on this axis. The units on this axis are in terms of pressure. This axis is altitude. In the prerequisites for this course, you are expected to have been introduced to these concepts before, therefore we will go through them fairly quickly. Pressure on this axis is shown in millibars. It is more common to use hectopascals, which are the same. Many meteorologists and even meteorologists' texts still use millibars. Millibars have been the language of the field for a very long time. The tropospheric depth is about 900 millibars. The depth of the entire atmosphere is about 1,000 millibars. Therefore, in terms of mass, about 90% of it is in the troposphere, which is this layer down here, which is 10 to 12 kilometers in altitude. Pressure units, again, are millibars. So surface pressure tends to be around 1,000 millibars, which is the same as 1,000 hectopascals. A pascal is a newton per meter squared, newton per meter squared, and a newton is kilograms meters per second square. You can see the basic definition of F equals ma in the definition of the newton because there's kilogram mass, there is acceleration meters per second squared. What I want to do here is to think a little bit about what the pressure gradient is. And to do that, I have drawn a vertical axis here, height, which is z, longitude, which is our x. On that plot, I have put a temperature profile, temperature 1. I've marked with this red line a surface of constant height. Here is the second temperature profile, which I just put here so that you can see that it's different, but this temperature profile is at some other location, x. And because the temperature is different, the pressure is going to be different in these two places. So here's pressure 1 at height z associated with temperature 1. Here's pressure 2 at height z associated with temperature 2. Using finite differences, we can say that the pressure differences divided by the spatial differences are given here as p2 minus p1 divided by x2 minus x1. And this would be an estimate of the pressure gradient in the x direction at constant z. Hence, this is an approximation for dp dx, the partial derivative of pressure on a constant height surface. And this would be an estimate or a conceptual notion of the pressure gradient in our momentum equation. This is simply a figure of pressure versus altitude. What you see here is a very strong relationship, and in fact, this is an exponential relationship. It will do you well to remember that this is an exponential relationship because as we develop the equations and as we move forward, we will often be 
using logarithms, and logarithms are the inverse function of the exponential. Under virtually all conditions, pressure and density decrease with height. dp dz is less than zero. That means, if you want to think about it just in terms of signs, a delta in p will be a negative delta in z, that is a negative finite difference in pressure will be of the opposite sign of a finite difference in height. This relationship is why pressure might be a good vertical coordinate. If dpdz goes to zero, then the utility as a vertical coordinate falls apart because you lose a monotonic relationship. It could become multivalued. Once again, returning to the horizontal momentum equations, we're now going to want to pay special attention to the formulation of the pressure gradient, because if we're going to use pressure as an independent variable, pressure as the vertical coordinate, then very obviously we cannot continue to use pressure in the same way in these equations. What do we need? We need the pressure gradient and pressure coordinates. We need a way to express derivatives in pressure coordinates. And we need a way to express vertical velocity in pressure coordinates. What we will focus on in this lecture is the definition of the geopotential, which is then going to let us more easily develop the pressure gradient force in pressure coordinates. In order to get the definition of geopotential, we're going to use the hydrostatic relation. There are a couple of problem sets that use the hydrostatic relationship that I refer students to. There's also an earlier lecture talking about the hydrostatic equation in terms of the ideal gas law. Up here is the definition of the hydrostatic relationship. This is dp dz equals minus rho g rho being density, g being gravity. What we're going to do is we're going to integrate this equation. We're going to take the dz, we're going, we'll bring it over here. Hence, we'll be looking at an increment in pressure as a function of an increment in height. So we will be defining the relationship between pressure and height in terms of differentials. We'll integrate from some height to infinity, which we will take as the top of the atmosphere. And at the top of the atmosphere, we're going to take the pressure to be zero. If we do that integration, then we have pressure at infinity minus the pressure at some height is equal to the integral from z to infinity of rho g dz. Because this is zero, then the pressure at some height is going to be equal to the integral of z to infinity, so all of the air above it, and that's the integral of rho g dz. This is force, this is the weight of air. To get to the concept of geopotential, we will first consider the vertical force, the gravitational force, and we will use this equation that, that the gravitational force F equals minus G gravity times the unit vector in your local vertical K. We're going to define a variable phi such that the gradient of phi is equal to G. This in mathematics or calculus is called a potential function. Hence, by definition, d phi dz, that's full derivative, is equal to g. We will assume that phi is a function only of z. We're now going to integrate d phi dz with height. Here's the definition, d phi dz equals g. We'll rearrange it to d phi equals g dz. We're going to integrate from zero to z. We will get phi at z minus phi of zero is equal to the integral phi at zero at the ground is equal to zero. Hence, phi z equals the integral of zero to z of g dz. If you think about this for a second, 
when we integrated with the pressure, we looked at an integral from a height above, so from a certain height to the top of the atmosphere, because we were trying to get the weight, we're trying to get the pressure at a certain altitude. And here with geopotential, we're integrating from the ground up. What is geopotential? Geopotential is the potential energy that a parcel would have if it was lifted from the surface to the height z. Two or three slides ago, we defined d phi dz equal to g. If you go back to a basics physics course and look at the gravitational potential energy, that potential energy is mass times gravity times the height, which you can recast into mass times gravity times some increment of height dz divide by the mass and the potential energy per unit mass is equal to gh equals to gdz equals the increment of geopotential the increment of phi because here they are here's the relationship here and here Geopotential is analogous to the height of a pressure surface. We seek to have an analog for pressure on a height surface because in our momentum equation, if we're now going to use pressure as the independent vertical coordinate, then we need something on a pressure surface that can act like the pressure gradient. And that will be the height of the pressure surface because you can imagine that if you have a sloping pressure surface then you're going to have a horizontal gradient to link geopotential to pressure we're again going to use this idea of linking them as differentials back here to the definition gdz is equal to d phi we're going to now use the hydrostatic relationship which you can see here is dp dz equals minus rho g, but rewritten here as g dz, which is d phi, is equal to minus dp over rho. We're going to define a new variable, one over rho, which is alpha, which is going to be the specific volume. We're going to use the ideal gas law that alpha is equal to rt over pressure, and hence we can write gdz is equal to d phi is equal to minus rt dp over p pressure. So this derivation is simply taking this rt over p, placing it in here with the alpha, and we have d phi equals minus rt dp over pressure. We're now going to remember some calculus, but intuitively going back to the figure that we showed earlier, of pressure versus height as an exponential function, we should be expecting logarithms to start to appear into this process. And indeed, we have that d of the log of pressure is equal to 1 over p dp, or dp over p. d phi is equal to minus rt d log of pressure because we've just taken this which was in the definition on the previous slide here and just made this substitution and we now have this nice differential relationship which we can integrate from one pressure to another r is a constant and we get this relationship that the geopotential phi at one altitude minus phi at the other altitude is the negative of the integral from p1 to p2 t d log of p. We're going to change the sign of this by going from p2 to p1 and we keep the temperature in here the d log of p. We're now going to define a quantity called geopotential height where we're going to take the geopotential and divide it by g naught. Again, we can take an integral here and say that z2 minus z1 is equal to r over g naught because we're going to use g naught as a constant. 
the integral from P2 to P1, temperature d log of P. Z2 minus Z1, since we've now turned it into a unit that is meters by dividing it by this acceleration, is called thickness. If you were to use a mean value for T such that you could do this integral easily, you will see that the thickness is proportional to the average temperature of a layer between two pressure surfaces. Again, this is thickness. It's proportional to temperature. And for those of you interested in weather forecasting or doing analyses of you know, what the temperature is and, and perhaps the state of water, this is a very useful rule of thumb for determining whether you're at a rain-snow transition, for example. This has been an introduction to the geopotential. The geopotential has been defined in terms of a differential relationship between height and pressure. And we will now use this to develop next the pressure gradient or the geopotential gradient in pressure coordinates.